as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Wow, there goes another mighty tree for those rugged lumberjacks to haul down Sergeant Preston's Yukon Trail. Just think if you were a lumberjack, what stamina it would take. What a good nourishing breakfast you'd eat. Start now to build up your stamina. At breakfast, always eat a heaping bowlful of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and your favorite fruit. Remember, wheat or rice shot from guns gives you added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. And delicious, taste them. You just can't beat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Happy Jordan was a reckless, happy-go-lucky young cowpuncher who had caught the gold rush fever and gone north to the Yukon Territory during the stampede of 98. He had staked out a claim on one of the creeks near Dawson, but the claim proved worthless, and Happy soon found himself on the brink of starvation. As a result, he had thrown in his luck with a trio of outlaws headed by a man named Bull Antrim. Bull well, there! Uh... One night, the gang returned to its hideout after robbing a trading company office in Dawson City. It was the first job in which Happy had taken part as a member of the gang. Right the lunch, Slim. Yeah, sure thing, Bo. <clears throat> yeah, that's better. Now let's get off our parkers and count up the swag, eh? Hey, Jordan, what blazes you got there? Puppy, what does it look like? Oh, yeah, puppy. Sure, I brought him all the way back from town in the pocket of my pocket. Isn't he a beaut? Ah, just look at his fur. It's all silver, except for black ears and black legs. Never mind that. Where'd you get him? Oh, he's wandering around the street outside the trading company office. The poor little critter, I reckon he was lost. How about it, Poochie? Are you hungry? <laughs> ah, well, don't you worry. I'll get you some caribou meat right away. <laughs> Doggone it, Happy. You sure are a card. You go out on a hold-up and come back with a puppy. <laughs> uh, yes, me, he's loco. The next morning, Bull exploded with rage when he discovered that the pup had gotten hold of his parka and chewed it up during the night. Why, you blessed little mutt? What's the matter, Bull? Take a look at this parka. Holy smoke, he really chewed it Why, up. Hey, Thunder, I'll teach him a lesson he won't forget. Hey, what are you doing with that pup? I'm going to beat some sense into his head. That's what I'm going to do. When I'm through, I'm going to boot him out of here. Put him down, Bill. Put him down, nothing. Look at the way he ripped my parka. I'll see that your parka gets mended. And I'll punish him so it won't happen again. Don't worry. I'll save you that trouble right now. I said put him <laughs> down. Are you going to tell me what to do? You heard me. Jordan, you're mighty fast on the draw. But it so happens you're not packing a six-gun right now. In case you've forgotten, your holster's hanging over there on the wall. I don't need a six-gun to handle you, Bull. Hey, Thunder, we'll see about that right now. Hey, now, wait a minute, you two. Simmer down a bit. Yeah, for Pete's sake, there's no call to get so lathered up about a measly little pup. It's about time this Jasper learned who's running this guy. I'm not arguing about that. I just don't intend to stand by and see you maul this pup. Well, you saw what he did to Bull's pocket. That's right. You had no business bringing him here in the first place. If you want to stay on in a gang, you'll have to get rid of him. That's fair enough, ain't it, Bull? And suppose I don't want to get rid of him. Then you can clear out right now. All right. Then hand over my share of last night's take. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jordan. 
But a quitter's got no share coming to him. Why, you... You heard what he said, Happy. Now, take your choice. Either get rid of the pup or clear out, empty-handed. Now, which will it be? <laughs> well, gents, I reckon that don't leave me much choice at all. I'll get rid of the pup. Later that morning, Happy set out for Dawson to have Bulls Parker repaired. He took the puppy with him on his sled. When he arrived in town, he halted his team before a small laundry shop, which bore a sign saying, Expert Mending and Repairing. Oh! Oh, you have to... A small boy who was playing in front of the shop caught sight of the puppy and exclaimed in admiration. Golly, what a beautiful pup. You like him, Sonny? I'll say I do. All right, he's yours. You... You mean I can have him? Sure. I was hoping to find a good home for him, and you look like just the kind of master he ought to have. Oh, golly, thanks. Wait till I take him inside and show sis. Does your sister work here? She owns the shop. Do you have some clothes you want laundered? No, but I have a parker that needs mending. She's good at mending. Come on, I'll ask her to do it free. Oh, thanks, Sonny, but you don't need to do that. Hey, sis. Phil, Phil, what's the matter? Look at the puppy I've got. Oh, he's beautiful. But where did you get him? This man gave him to me. Oh, that was awfully nice of you. Shucks, I... That's all right, Miss... Uh, Stanford, Norma Stanford. I sure am pleased to meet you. My name's Jordan, Happy Jordan. (laughs) This is my brother, Phil. Howdy, Phil. Pleased to meet you. He has a parker that needs mending, sis. I said I'd ask you to do it free. Will you please? Oh, no, no, that's not necessary. Of course I'll do it free. Why, it's the least I can do after you gave Phil such a nice puppy. How soon would you like to call for it? Well, the sooner the better. In fact, if you feel like doing it right now, well, I sure wouldn't mind waiting around. (laughs) All right, you just sit down and I'll attend to it right away. Happy returned to the shop the next day and also the day after. Goodness, you certainly need a lot of mending done. Well, you see, I'm awful hard on my clothes. (laughs) You must be. Now, what is it this time? Well, here's a shirt that needs some buttons sewn on. And here's a pair of wool mittens that are sort of out at the fingers. Well, I I won't be able to do these mittens right away. Oh, that's okay. I don't have the right shade of yarn. Well, I'll be glad to call back for them tomorrow. All right, Mr. Jordan. Uh, Look... How about forgetting that Mr. Stuff and calling me happy? (laughs) All right, then. Happy. Thanks. (laughs) There. There's something else I'd like to ask you, too. Go ahead. Do you suppose you'd still be willing to keep up our acquaintance if... if it turned out I was in trouble with the law? In trouble with the law? What do you mean? First answer my question. Well, I I might. (sighs) I reckon that's all the answer I can expect till you hear what I have to say. Please, tell me what you mean. All right. It's a long story, but here goes. When I first came up to the Yukon Territory, I staked out a claim. Phil Stanford had taken his puppy out for a stroll that afternoon. As he paraded proudly along the street, he encountered Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police and his great dog, King. Hi, Sergeant Preston. Hi, King. Hello, Phil. I have a new pup, I see. Yes, sir, isn't he swell? Come on, Butch. I'm going to lift you up so the sergeant can have a look at you. See how beautifully he's marked? All silver except for black ears and black legs. I agree, Phil. He's a beautiful pup. I was admiring him the other day over at the trading company kennels. The, the trading company kennels? Why, yes. Mr. Culver was showing him to me. Isn't that where you got him? No, sir. A customer at the store gave him to me. He said he was trying to find a home for him. He thought I'd make a good master. Well, I could be wrong, but his markings are rather unusual. It's hard to believe there are two pups in Dawson marked like that. Maybe the man who gave him to me bought him for Mr. Culver. It's possible, Phil, but somehow I doubt it. Mr. Culver prized this pup very highly. In fact, he told me he wouldn't take less than $500 for him if he sold him at all. If the man did buy him, son, it hardly seems likely he'd turn around and give him away. Golly, you don't suppose he stole him from Mr. Culver, do you? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know what to think. Just to be on the safe side, would you mind walking over to the trading company with me and checking with Mr. Culver? All right, Sergeant Preston, but... Golly, I sure hope Mr. Culver won't take Butch away from me. Henry Culver, the owner of the Culver Trading Company, kept a large kennel of huskies which were used to haul supplies and furs to and from the company's trading posts. He identified Butch immediately. Why, sure, this is my pup, Sergeant. I'd know him anywhere. By George, I'm certainly grateful to you for finding him. When did you lose him, Henry? I discovered he was gone this morning after the robbery. 
I figured he'd probably escape from the run sometime during the excitement. Then I suppose I shan't be able to keep Butch. Uh, what I'd like to know is just who is this man who gave you the pup and how he got hold of him. His name is Happy Jordan. Happy? That name means something to you? By thunder, it certainly does. One of the four men who held up the office was called Happy. I remember hearing one of the other crooks call him by that name. What did he look like? Well, they were all wearing masks, so I can't tell you much about him. Except that he was tall and he seemed youngish. What about Happy Jordan, Phil? What's he like? Oh, he's tall and light-haired, and I don't think he's much older than my sister. Have you any idea what he does for a living or where he lives? No, sir, but he talked to my sister quite a bit. Maybe she could tell you something. Well, that's a good suggestion. I'll go over and talk to her right now, Henry, and let you know later if I get any leads. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if I went into a Yukon Trail eating place some morning and said to the fellow at the counter, Uh, let me have a bowl of Quaker popped wheat, please. Man the guns, explode a bowl. Did I hear you say... What are you fretting about, mister? Didn't you want that there breakfast cereal shot from guns? Well, I sure did. Well, but... that's what you're getting. Well, thank you. I was just a little surprised you folks up here in the Yukon knew that Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice is the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Sure, everybody knows about them premium flavor-rich grains of Quaker puffed wheat and rice being exploded up to eight times normal size. Right, that makes them bigger and better tasting. With bang-up nut-like flavor, too. Yes, that's why they're so popular with folks around here. Why, you can't beat them. Every time you pour out a heaping bowlful, put on some milk or cream, and top it with fruit, you've got a super delicious treat. <laughs> You're right there. And did you ever hear how nourishing they are? No, I reckon they ain't. Well, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Right good thing for folks to know. You bet your life. You get this swell nourishment in the delicious, flavorful, tenderly crisp cereal that just melts in your mouth. The one and only Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. Now to continue. After talking to Henry Culver, the owner of the trading company which had been robbed, Sergeant Preston and little Phil Stanford went to the shop run by Phil's sister, Norma. The sergeant hoped to find out from Norma something more about the man called Happy Jordan. Sergeant Preston and, and King. Hello, Norma. Hi, sis. Why, Phil, where's your new puppy? He, he isn't mine anymore. What do you mean? He belongs to Mr. Culver, the man who owns the trading company. But Happy Jordan gave him to you. Did Jordan tell you where or how he got the pup? Well, no, he didn't. Why? The pup disappeared from the trading company kennels, found to be missing the morning after the company was robbed. Are... Are you suggesting that Happy Jordan stole the puppy? They well, have stolen a lot more than that. What do you mean by that? It happens that one of the masked men who held up the trading company was called Happy... Good heavens. As a matter of fact, I was hoping you might be able to give me some information about Jordan. Well, why should I be able to give you any information about him? Well, Phil says he talked to you a good deal when he was here at the shop. Well, it's true. He chatted with me. Did he say anything at all that might offer a clue to his background or his whereabouts? Well, not that I can think of. Huh? Oh, uh, wait a minute. Why'd he come here to your shop? Well, he brought some clothes to be mended. Did you mend them while he waited? Well, yes. That is all but a pair of mittens. The mittens here now? That's right. May I see them, please? Yes. Yes, of course. Here they are. Thanks. What are you going to do with them? See if King can get Jordan's scent from them. Here, boy, sniff these. <laughs> Fine, King. Mind. How about it, fellow? Got the scent? <laughs> Good boy, King. Will King be able to trail him just from the scent on those mittens? Oh, yes, I think so. Once he has the scent, he seldom loses it. All right, King, let's go, boy. Honey, <laughs> thanks for your help. Wait a minute, Sergeant. What's the matter? I do know something about Happy Jordan. Oh? In fact, I I know all about him. 
He told me the whole story. I thought you were holding something back, Norma. Well, I didn't want to lie to you, but I couldn't betray his confidence. It's your duty to tell the police anything you know about a suspected but criminal. you don't understand. Happy intends to go straight. He's planning to give himself up. Give me all the facts. Well, Happy isn't really a criminal. He came to the Yukon as a gold rusher, but his claim gave out and so did his money. He was on the verge of starvation, and that's the only reason he joined the gang. What about the trading company holdup? Well, it's true. He was in on that, but... He admitted it to me this afternoon, but it was the first and the only crime that he's taken part in, and now he regrets the whole thing. If he intended to give himself up, why didn't he go straight to headquarters? Because he doesn't like the idea of squealing on the other members of the gang. When he left here, he said he was going back to the hideout and recover the money that was taken from the trading company. And then he was going to give the others a chance to either surrender along with him or make their getaway. I see. Oh, won't you please wait and give him time to surrender voluntarily? Give him that much of a chance. Well, I'm sorry, Norma, but I'm afraid it's out of the question. It's my duty to bring the whole gang to justice. But I promise you this, if I do capture him, what you've told me will count in his favor. All right, King, let's go, boy. <coughs> Meanwhile, after leaving Norma's shop, Happy had started back to the hideout. Dusk had fallen by the time he reached his destination. The gang was just finishing an early supper as they heard him halting his team outside the cabin. Yeah, must be happy now. Sure it took a long time in town. Howdy, boys. Well, it's about time you're getting back, Jordan. Sorry, Paul. Tonight's the night we're robbing the Red Dog Roadhouse. I told you I wanted to get an early start so we can pull the job off and get back here before daybreak. Yeah, yeah, I know, Bill. I didn't realize it was getting so late, that's all. Well, you realize it now. So if you want any grub before we hit the trail, you'd better pitch in fast. Sure, I'll be right with you. Just wait till I hang up my pocket. Happy he hadn't worn his gun to town. His holster and gun belt were hanging on the wall. Coffee, yeah. As he removed his pocket and hung it on a nail, his back was turned to the other three members yeah, of the gang. Without warning, he suddenly jerked the six-shooter out of his holster and whirled around to face the three men at the table. Reach, all of you. Go on, reach, Pronto. What in thunder are you up to, Jordan? I'll tell you what I'm up to. I've had enough of this owl hoot life, and I'm aiming to give myself up to the law. Well, go ahead if you're that local. Well, that's not all. When I surrender, I'm going to turn in all the money we stole from the Culver Trading Company. Now, listen. Why? Shut up and listen. If you're smart, you'll all come along with me and give yourselves up to the Mounties, same as I'm going to do. And suppose we don't feel like giving ourselves up. Then you better hightail it out of here while you've still got the chance. When I leave, I'm taking all your guns with me, just to make sure you don't pull that hold up tonight. Any of you want to come with me and surrender? What do you think? All right, suit yourselves. You'll have as long as it takes me to get to town and the Mounties to get back out here to make yourselves scarce. Savvy? Yeah, we, we heard you. In the meantime, all three of you get up from the table. Huh? <laughs> hey, what are you going to do now, Jordan? I'm aiming to make you three come over here and lie face down on the floor. And give me a chance to collect the guns and the money. All right, come on, move. Keep your hands up high. Bull's mind was working fast. A coil of heavy rope was hanging over one of the roof beams, not far from the point where Happy was standing. Come on, get moving. Bull was a big man, and his raised hands would be just about level with the dangling coil. As he passed under it, he grabbed the rope with his right hand and lashed out with it at Happy's gun arm. The rope had knocked Happy's arm downward, and the bullet plowed harmlessly into the floor. All right, take it, boys. Before he could recover, the three cooks were on top of him. Happy put up a furious fight, but the odds were too great. Soon he had been battered into unconsciousness. I reckon that'll hold him for a while, that dirty double-crosser. What'll we do with him, Bull? Kill him? Sure, we'll kill him. But not just yet, We'll tie him up and leave him here till we get back from robbing the roadhouse. <laughs> I want to give him a good slow going over first. And take my time about killing him. Hey, you're the boss. Hey, take the rope and tie him up good and tight. Gag him, too. As soon as you get him tied and gagged, we'll hit the trail. Meanwhile, King was following Happy Jordan's scent northward from Dawson. But some time later, the great dog and his master arrived at the crook's cabin. Okay. Come on, boy. Drawing his gun, the sergeant tried the door gently. As King caught Happy's scent and heard the muffled noises he was making, the great dog advanced eagerly into the room. The sergeant saw a man lying roped to a bunk with a gag tied across his mouth. Take it easy, mister. I'll get you free as soon as I light the lamp. A moment later, the lamp had been lit, and the gag had been removed from Happy's mouth. Now, I'll cut these ropes. Thanks, Marty. I suppose you're Happy Jordan. That's right. How did you know? Norma Stanford told me the whole story. What? 
You mean she turned right around and reported me to the law? No, she told me the story against her will. I'll explain that later. There you are. Thanks. Tell me what happened here. I got the drop on the gang. Told them I was going to give up myself and turn in the holdup money. Then Bull Antrim... Bull Antrim? Is he a member of the gang? Sure, he's the leader. Anyway, as I say, I had him covered. And then Antrim pulled a fast trick with a coil of rope and... Well, you saw the result. Where'd they go? To a place called the Red Dog Roadhouse. It's north of here, about five or six hours travel. Yes, I know, on a trail of 40 miles. They're planning to hold it up. The place will be loaded with sourdoughs, which means they'll put up a fight, and Bull Antrim's a killer. I've got to get out there and stop him. Let me go with you. Wearing handcuffs? You don't need to handcuff me. I won't try to escape. All right, I'll take you along, but I warn you, don't try anything. I'll not hesitate to shoot. I got you, Parker, and let's get moving. The Red Dog Roadhouse was a long, rambling, two-story log structure which had been built in the shelter of a steep hillside. It was well after midnight, and the cafe on the first floor was going full blast when Bull Antrim and the other two crooks arrived there and halted their teams in the glow of light shed from the front of the building. Oh, there, oh, oh. Oh, all right, boys. Let's go around to the side of the building where it's dark and put on our masks. Right, right, too. A few minutes later, after they had adjusted their masks and drawn their guns, Bull said... Yo, said, boys. Sure. Yeah. All right, then, let's go. Hey, wait a minute, Bull. Someone's coming around the bend in the trail. Yeah, you're right. We better stay here in the shadows till they go by or go inside. Hey, that guy in the lead's a Mountie. Yeah. And by son to the one behind him looks like Happy Jordan. He must have gotten loose and warned the police about the holdup. King was running ahead of the team as loose lead. As he neared the roadhouse, his nostrils picked up a scent. A scent he had smelled back at the crook's cabin. He knew that men were hiding somewhere in the darkness on the near side of the building. With a warning bark to his master, he veered suddenly off the trail. Hey, Mackle, that dog's coming right toward us. He'll give us away. Get your guns ready. Hey, the muddy's calling him by. Man, I lie, that was a close call. King was puzzled, but he obeyed his master without question. A moment later, the Mountie and his companion drew up in front of the roadhouse, and the crooks heard them halting their team. What do we do, Bull? We can't go through with the holdup now. When we hear him go inside, then we'll grab our teams and make a getaway. Okay, the door slammed. They're going inside. Come on, let's clear out of here. All right. As the crooks rounded the corner of the building and headed toward their teams, a voice suddenly rapped out a sharp command. Up those hands! Whirling in the direction of the voice, the crooks saw Sergeant Preston and Happy Jordan standing on the porch. Happy was armed with the sergeant's carbine. That's Samani and George gun him. No, you don't. The sergeant and Happy had shot first before the crooks could raise their guns to fire, and their bullets had dropped Bull and Jib. The third crook, who had been blocked from the line of fire by the other two, gave up in panic as he saw his companions fall. Don't shoot, I give up. Stand where you were. Slim stood with his hands in the air as the sergeant and Happy closed in. You're under arrest in the name of the Crown. Where did you two come from? We thought you went inside. That's what we wanted you to think. My dog warned me someone was hiding in the shadows, so I decided to draw you out in the open. Bull and Jib are still alive, Sergeant. We didn't kill them. Wait until I handcuff this man, and I'll attend to their wounds. The following day, back in Dawson City, Phil Stanford and Norma were in the shop when Sergeant Preston and Happy Jordan entered. The sergeant was carrying a silver-furred puppy under one arm. Why, it's Sergeant Preston and... and Happy. And the sergeant has Butch. Hello, Miss Norma. You're not even wearing handcuffs. Didn't Sergeant Preston arrest you? Sure. In fact, I'm supposed to be in jail right now. But the sergeant fixed up with the Marty inspector to let me come over and talk to you for a little while. Oh, well... Then I suppose you'll have to serve a term in prison for taking part in that robbery. Why, no, I don't believe he will, Norma. Mr. Happy went wrong, but he realized his mistake and tried to make reparation. What's more, he prevented another robbery and helped me capture Bull Antrim's gang. He even risked his life just to recover the money that was stolen from the trading company. Yes, Norma, and that will be brought out at his trial. Inspector Conrad's going to try to get him off with a suspended sentence. Oh, that's wonderful, Sergeant. I... Oh, I'm so glad it turned out this way, Happy. I feel mighty good about it myself. And when the trial's over, if I do get off, well, there's something I'm mighty anxious to talk to you about. Yes. Sergeant, how come you have Butch with you? Oh, yes, I was almost forgetting about that, Phil. Mr. Culver asked me to uh, give him to you. Give him to me? You mean I may have him? That's right, Phil. You see, it was your information about Happy giving you this pup that eventually led to the capture of the gang and the recovery of the stolen money. So Mr. Culver thought you ought to have some kind of a reward. Oh, golly. 
Butch is the best reward he could give me. Speaking of rewards, King, I'm not forgetting how you warned me about those crooks. That rate's an extra big caribou steak tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, boy, thanks to you, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure, Passport to Death. It's the winner by a mile. Yes, the cereal that's sure to win your whole family's favor is delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're in first place with Mom because they're quick, ready to serve, save time in the morning. They're the winner every time with the youngsters, because choice premium grains are shot from guns, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them extra crisp and tender, full of delicious nut-like flavor. And Dad picks the big red and blue package of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with the picture of the smiling Quaker man because it's such a refreshing breakfast dish. And think of the nourishment your family can cash in on. Yes, in every bowlful, there are extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Top with milk or cream and fruit for a deluxe family breakfast that's really economical. Your best buy every time. Remember, the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice comes only in the large red and blue package. A fine, modern package with a sealed inner lining. That lining serves to doubly protect the flavor and crispness until the moment you pour it into a bowl. For that reason, Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is never sold in bags or bulk. Buy both delicious kinds tomorrow. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting, sir. Sergeant, I sent for you because I have a special assignment for you in Selkirk. I'm ready, Inspector. Good. This assignment is an unusual one. As you know, there's a war going on. Spies are at work up here. A code book has been stolen from the American consulate and a man murdered. I want that code book brought back along with the killer. I'll do my best, Inspector. I'll leave for Selkirk immediately and take King with me. Goodbye, sir. Come along, King. (laughs) Sergeant Preston is leaving on an unusual case and might be forced to take unusual means to solve it. But he's hunting foreign agents who will stop at nothing, even murder, to carry out their mission. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats. Because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.